Hang on to your boots, as they say. <laughs> okay, that's great. Uh, so we've got quite a few people on there, so welcome. We'll just give it another minute because it's 8.59. So everything looking good? I'm just turning my head to my producer. <laughs> hey, what happened to your lot? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? What happened to the light? I mean, <laughs> get a bit closer to the camera, Warren. I, I want to see, you know. So how's it down there in Australia? Very quiet down under. <laughs> yeah, very quiet. Um, okay. See yeah, so, down there. Yeah, uh, Sarah, if you can hear me. Um, yeah, I know it's late in the UK. I think it's at about 11 p.m. But yeah, I've just, uh, I think, pressed the uh, play button. And so we are recording. So just for you, Sarah, we're going to record it. All right. And that's great. Thanks for drop popping by anyway. So thanks, Sarah. Uh, 11, I thought it was, because uh, I've got clients in the UK. So I knew it was bedtime. So sleep well. And uh, <laughs> And uh, we'll see you on the replay. Um, yeah, better than 4 a.m. Okay, okay, thanks, Sarah. Sarah, if you've got any questions uh, before you go to bed, now's a good time uh, to be doing that. Just, just drop them in the chat box, and that goes for everybody. Just drop, drop things in the, uh, in the chat box. That's fantastic. Look, it's 9, 9.01 uh, a.m. in Melbourne, Australia. So we're gonna get started, Warren. So thanks everyone for taking the time and effort. I know you've got a bit of time on your hands, haven't we all, hasn't everybody? But I think this is an important um, time to uh, really just assess where we're at and what we can do about it. Um, so we've been looking for a while, or I've been looking at a while as a photography business coach at ways that I can help my clients grow throughout this quieter period. And I came up with 32, and so I've, um, we're going to talk about some today. If we don't have time, we're going to sort of extend this, you know, to another webinar next week and another one and another one, because we want to try and go into a bit of detail and not just give you fluffy stuff. We want to give you the practical steps to do and um, just to keep you occupied. And we're quite buoyant within the group of uh, photographers that I coach. Um, so we're looking forward to, uh, to the future. Uh, one of my clients I spoke to yesterday said, oh, I can't wait when this is over because I got, I'm going to do so, so much in the meantime to prepare my business, which wasn't properly prepared before because I've been too busy. So now there's a lot of steps we can do. So thanks for coming on board. I've got a little bit of sniffle, a bit of a cough, but <coughs> that's okay. Do the right thing. I'll go and wash my hands in a sec. And um, so I want to, uh, and I'm not making light of the situation, believe me, it's pretty dreadful out there. And the numbers coming out of the UK, 500 deaths in a 24 hour period, it's horrific. So uh, we've got a, a choice, I suppose. Um, we can get dragged down, but whatever we do, one of the most important things is to keep our attitude right and keep our mindset right. And we're going to speak about that in a minute. And I think that's very important to keep our sanity at least. Mm -hmm. uh, I myself, uh, with uh, Wendy, uh, we're in 14-day uh, self-isolation and just having come back from New York. So we're able to uh, walk the streets uh, very infrequently. We will be doing that, but uh, on Saturday. So, um, yeah, we're, we're surviving well. Uh, she's still alive. I'm still alive. And uh, we're still talking to one another. So that's great. And, and, we, are, <laughs> and we are working hard um, to help photographers out there. And morning, uh, Mike. Uh, good to see you as well. And Gary, Dominic, David, Dave, Damien, Brooke, um, Greg, uh, Eric. Um, and a lot of others are on here this call. So we've got people, and Anne, good to see you. Good to see you there. You, you know you were the person I was talking about, the 
can't wait to get back to business. And so thanks for your inspiration with that as well. Yesterday, um, you inspired me to sort of, uh, you know, keep, keep pushing photographers forward. So today we're going to go through a few of those steps just to help you. And I invited what I call a special guest and Warren is special. When you learn more about him, you'll realize how special he is. Um, uh, Warren is in um, Cary, North Carolina. I was up there just less than two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Uh, we spent three days at his studio just working on things, working on everything. And I wanted to relate to you the experiences that we had there and what Warren actually did uh, that you may can do if you haven't, um, just to keep the stability with your business. And uh, Warren's been amazing. I've been coaching him for 18 months or more. And uh, the, the results that he's achieved, and uh, I give him credit, not me credit, uh, the results have been fantastic. Thank so, so, <laughs> yeah. so, Warren, um, just tell us a little bit about your studio, about where you're situated, and just how long you've been in business. Um, and, and just uh, fill us in about where you sit at present. Sure. Um, so I'm based in North Carolina. It's Cary, North Carolina. It's about uh, 165,000 people in this town. So, you know, it's kind of a small town, I guess, um, small town feel. Um, but I love it here. <clears throat> Been in business for 15 years. Um, but formally, you know, as a full-time wedding photographer for a majority of those years, uh, doing some destination and a lot of local. Um, Benny and I met probably what, uh, almost a year and a half ago, I guess now, um, when my wedding business was really starting to suffer a little bit. And, um, you know, you've pushed me to go and explore a few other things, you know, which has been really cool. Um, I've got a studio that I opened up. Um, Gosh, we're actually almost hitting our second year of our lease. And uh, what I had to do is uh, converted a, an old store here as a hair salon into a studio. So we're in like this tiny little strip mall in downtown Cary. So yeah, it's really cool. It's got a nice kind of vibe to it. So you, you did the renovation and, uh, and all of that, uh, put in a lot of uh, lighting, et cetera. And it's yeah. just an open space. Have you got any quick photos to show us? Yeah, yeah. Let me um, see if I can do this right. All right. So I just took some photos today, actually, of the outside. Oh, uh, yeah. So you can see I've got, um, you know, we're positioned right there on the right hand side of the building on the top floor. Yep. And, um, you know, there's only eight different businesses. Well, technically, there can be eight. There's actually a dance school on the majority of the lower floor, a, a really cool candy store, and then just a bunch of other businesses on the top floor. Um, you know, so it's a, it's a really kind of cool setup. Um, and it's very easy for people to kind of park right outside and come right in and, you know, it, it looks really polished and professional. And then what I've got in the second picture here, it's just a few other um, things that uh, Bernie and I were working on. Uh, the picture in the lower left hand corner here um, is how it looks now. It used to look really cluttered with loads of different photos and whatnot, you know, in the studio. So, we, you know, Bernie and Wendy really kind of cleaned that up. Um, and this is how it looks now. Have you got a general shot there? Of the. Yeah, maybe we'll look at that. I think we'll make that a separate webinar uh, of what yeah. we did in that and uh, how we changed the lighting, we changed the globes and all sorts of things we did in person sales, etc. cetera. Um, yeah. If you could just unshare a sec, Warren. Um, yeah. I just wanted to have you as my guest because a couple of years ago, you uh, were close to death on more than one occasion. Uh, you're talking about a brain operation or something. Tell us more. <laughs> Yeah, you know, there's nothing like a little bit of brain surgery and some chemo to kind of uh, make you look at life a little bit differently. Um, so I had a couple of brain surgeries and, uh, to treat a, a genetic condition I've got, and um, followed by a year of chemo. And uh, during that time of chemo, um, I came across this studio that I've been keeping an eye on actually for many years and it became available. 
So I thought, well, why not? Why don't I just go ahead and renovate that while I was going through that treatment? But and, at uh, that present time, when didn't you lose your house and a lot of other things? Yeah, so, you know, medical bills in this country, are, you know, in the US, are, you know, they can really mount up. And then when Were you, you hit with about 100,000 or something? Um, I spent about 50,000. Um, well, the bills, yeah, I mean, it, it was mounting up. I, I had to sell my house. I sold my old car. Um, basically just liquidated a lot of stuff and this really kind of downsized uh, the way I live and I think what I realized was that I had a lot of clutter you know you just don't need a lot of that stuff yeah. so what I'm doing now uh, to follow Dave Ramsey approach is you know just kind of like reduce it all down to what you need and then just kind of start building up from there again and uh, see it's been a really kind of interesting process to go through I guess um, a little nerve-wracking at points you know so if, because why I invited you, one of the reasons was because you'd been through those very traumatic and difficult times and, uh, you know, you were on chemo for a year, you had all these medical bills, you had to sell your house, you had to sell your car, you had to sell everything just to pay the medical bills. So you've been in a pretty tough situation and you got through that and that was a long period. We're not talking about, you know, three months, we're talking about 12 months. So... Yeah. And um, that's why I invited you to sort of uh, make, sort of help people to understand that we, we can get through this. It's going to be a while, but you're living proof that, um, you know, it can be done. And then we built your studio and we were going really, really well, right? We, <laughs> when I came two weeks ago, we got everything perfect. We got the, you know, the bodywork polished and the engine oiled and, and we're ready to go. And then you closed the studio when? Only two days ago or something. Gosh, um, it was just the end of last week at five o'clock. Uh, you know, it was kind of like really kind of gut-wrenching feeling, but it's for the, for the better cause, right? To, you know, to just really reduce down our, our exposure with one another. Um, you know, so it's a good cause to do. But we moved all of our bookings, all 20 plus bookings uh, for this month to next month. And uh, I'm just hoping that we don't have to do that again. But if we do, you know, that's, that's going to be the way we have to do it. Um, one thing I'd like to say actually about, um, you know, that chemo time. You know, I got the studio really with the idea that I'd be doing weddings and headshots and stuff. And I completely pivoted. Uh, when we met uh, at the end of that year, uh, I started jumping right into uh, portraits. And really what we've done is build that whole business up. And last year, I never expected this, but I had my best year in business in 15 years, which is just mind blowing. And so I was so excited, you know, after your visit, you know, we got everything kind of lined up. <laughs> Ready to go. <laughs> You know, and I was thinking, this is going to be even better than last year. And I still believe it can be. Um, my thought is, you know, just spend all this time w working on everything um, that you've had in the back of your head, the things that you know you've got to get done. So when we get that chance to open the doors again, my engine is revved up and I'm, I'm ready to go. You're ready on the starting line. The car's oh, in yeah. great condition. It's fine-tuned. Uh, uh, and, and the tank is full of petrol because when you get back you will have 20 or 30 sessions to to rip right into yep yeah and that's that's the great thing so we, we know you've been through a horrendous journey and and one of the things you've always said to me and we've worked together a bit on this is about mindset so yeah. tell me more about your mindset, how you got your mindset out of this? What were the books you read or what did you do? You know, uh, it's a really hard thing to, um, to ever get criticized, right? To have somebody evaluate what you're doing, how you're doing stuff. Uh, but it's one of the, the best things you can do for yourself. So when you're going through a spiraling down like uh, wedding industry, that's how it felt to me, you know, and then I, I got all the medical issues and all the bills and you feel like your world is just collapsing. You know, so I just stopped. You know, I had to, I had to rest. And so when we started working together, I realized I had a lot of baggage, a lot of like uh, kind of 
just not the right kind of thoughts really uh, day to day uh, to run a business. And you kind of brought that uh, to my attention, I guess, through our, our weekly meetings, you know. And so I started listening to a lot of audio books and uh, also some podcasts and things like that. And then started to build from those books, I realized I need to build up like a morning ritual, like a, a morning routine. You know, it sounds like really kind of fluffy. But really, if you just kind of establish like a few basic things that you're going to do each day to kind of get your head in the right game, um, you can have a really successful day. And so I'm using those morning routines even more so now with this uh, downtime. Um, I'm still coming to my studio. It's just me here. <laughs> but I'm able to get a lot done. And I think you've got to be even more motivated now, you know, because there are no just that many distractions, you know, it's just you getting on with things on your to-do list. I think the important thing is to do something and that's why we've com sort of compiled this list. Mm -hmm. um, and, and as I say, that's what we do weekly in, in my coaching is um, I keep coming up with ideas and lists and things to do. Yeah. Um, rather than sitting there just um, dwelling on the problems and, uh, I feel the industry is very buoyant. In, in fact, Jeff, who we've got listening to this, um, did a Facebook ad and he's got 20 phone calls to make um, to amazing. make bookings for uh, May next year or June or when it, whenever it is. So people out there are still alive and people out there are still responding to advertising, marketing. So my first thing early on is to just keep trying things, keep testing things, don't stop doing things. No. You know, my, my uh, famous uh, Bernie-style Facebook ad is still working. Oh, yeah. It's incredible. It's yeah. still working. So that you can keep connecting with people. Um, you needn't stop doing that. So the first thing is to get your, your headspace right, your mindset right. Absolutely. And start to believe that we are going to survive out of this because what you've been through, I think it's, in, it's incredible and, and uh, it's sort of a pleasure to talk to you because oh, you. there may have been many occasions that uh, you thought you, you weren't going to make it. Uh, there was definitely, uh, you know, I think definitely that thought, you know, in your mind that, uh, well, this is it, you know. <laughs> Um, so actually what, what it actually uh, highlighted for me was why don't I just do everything I want to do? You know, why, why am I holding back? And uh, something happened this year, seeing the success of last year, yeah. I, I've realized that rather than just thinking about stuff, just do it. do it. Like seriously, just don't even like, think twice about it, jump right into it. So what I've been doing um, in the last few days actually is just imagining what May uh, or even June, I think it's going to be June personally, what yeah. June is going to look like when we open the doors up. And in my head, I see a busy studio. We've got all these people coming in. They can't wait to get, they, they get out of the house, come in, get some portraits taken. You know, I see it like super busy. And, um, and that's what motivates me over these next few weeks because I don't want to be face with June and then trying to catch up because I've taken some time off. Yeah. You know, be like there, happy to see these people, you know, walk in the door um, after they've been cooped up all this time and, you know, celebrating their lives, you know, in the studio. And you were, you, you were like a lot of photographers. They kept hanging on, hanging on, hanging on. Uh, what are the rules? Can I do headshots? Is it okay? Because that I can stay six feet away. Uh, can I shoot them on the beach? That's okay, isn't it? Can I do them in the park? But slowly but surely, the shutters, you know, are coming down. I think it's inevitable. Mm -hmm. It's not inevitable. It is now. Right. We can't yeah. photograph. It's about safety. It's about exactly. our own safety, that of others, that of people we don't even know that we may, you know, without knowing, um, spread the virus. So, and you were like that, weren't you? Hanging on, I'm at the studio. Can't I just take photos? Can't I sneak someone in the back door at midnight <laughs> and photograph <laughs> them and they give me money? It, 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 <laughs> well, stop it. 
it's got well, to stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what it is. You know, you're. You, I had a, a really a full schedule uh, for March. You know, we worked so hard to fill that schedule. Uh, it takes weeks to get there. You know, to, to do the ads, do the phone calls. You know, everything, right? Um, so, to, you know, to, what we ended up doing was just moving people if they requested it because we weren't technically supposed to close down. We were allowed to still conduct our business, just following a few, you know, cleaning rules. And so we did that, you know, and um, we actually only had two sessions in March because of following that process. And then I made a decision really just to move all of my appointments uh, for April, even though it was. Technically, right now, we are allowed to open up, you know, after uh, the middle of this month. My thought is it's probably going to get pushed out again. Um, so just take control, you know, of the situation. Do what you can do to take control. And my thought is just, just look at me um, with the idea. I've already told uh, the guy that works with me, we're probably going to have to end up moving those guys in May, you know, possibly to June. And that way, I don't panic. I don't even feel stressed about it. I just can start making some plans. Yeah, I, th I think the thing is, and when I started thinking about what I could get my clients to do, the first question, the very first question that came, came into my head is you've got to make a decision. Is your photography business worth fighting for? Are you going to put up a fight? This is going to be a fight. This is not going to be easy. You have a choice. You can either say no. I'm going to get out of this industry. I'm going to find something else if I can, or I'm going to retire or do whatever. But you've got to make a decision because that'll make it easier moving forward. You obviously made a decision and all my clients actually made the decision because I've asked them, are you willing to fight the fight? Mm -hmm. And they've all said, yes, Absolutely. We are going to keep doing this thing we love. We are not going to let this get in our way. We're going to move forward. So that's the first question, uh, everybody out there, that you've got to think about. <clears throat> do you want to do you want to fight? Because you've got to fight. And I've been through my fights over 40 years as studio owner. I've seen a recession. And, you know, times can be tough sometimes. And these are tough times. They're extraordinary times. So... If you want to fight, well, let's fight. And, uh, you know, as an industry, I'm sure we'll group together a little bit and help one another along the way. Um, you know, you're stuck at home. You've got no income. Um, the governments are throwing money at us, and that's fantastic. Um, everybody, you know, in the world can claim some of this money. So uh, look, talk to your accountant about your entitlements. Um, or your finance advisor and see what money you can get from the government um, because uh, they want the economy going too once, once this goes away. So that's one thing you can do certainly. And um, the, 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 of course, you can sit at home and just look at the news and updates and get very depressed or you can invest the precious time that you have in your business. So to make the virus impact a positive. And that's what we're looking at. We're making this a positive. And when I looked upon it, I mean, you can look upon it as a holiday break or a sabbatical. I like to think it's a sabbatical. I'm just having time off. You, you can say to yourself, I'm just having time off to learn more. Um, and, 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 and then I'm, I'm gonna come back, but this is not, not forever. So, so we're all going into hibernation, which is the word I like as well. We're hibernating. Um, so um, we've got to prepare for when we come out of it. And as Warren says, get the engine revving, have the engine revving when we get to the start line. So uh, a few things I thought of we could do. And the first things I thought of were how can we drag money in? Is the money out there that we can get in? So one thing we can do, and I've, I've worked with uh, photographers with this, is chasing up outstanding payments. If you've got money out there, now is the time to get more aggressive and try and get that money in. Understand this is your money. This is not their money. This is your money, and they've got it. So if people have defaulted on their payments, um, you've got to get tough with the way you contact them. I've, I've written for my clients some, some tough emails that have got a reaction. And we did that with you, Warren. Just, just tell us 
I know there wasn't m much money involved, was there, of getting money in, but these were still outstanding orders. Yeah, that's right. Uh, actually, when you were here at the studio, um, I had a few of the, the old wedding clients, you know, still around. And, um, you know, one of the problems I always had was trying to get them to finish their wedding albums. And I'm sure, you know, maybe other people can, uh, you know, um, can understand that, you know. Um, so, you know, we, you can post an email and I very nervously sent it, you know, but, um, you know, following your guidance, I've realized that I just do as you say and it always works out. And sure enough, uh, I was here on a Sunday because I just started to work as much as I could, you know, with the fear of having to close. And on that Sunday, uh, it was a few days after the email went out, I completed uh, three album uh, designs and got them all to approve it uh, that day. And then by Wednesday, I had more printed, ready to pick up the studio, you know, Miller's, they're so super fast to turn those around. Um, and so literally like within a week, um, we'd had it all closed out. Yeah, and these, the, these, you can't have uh, those orders because just to embarrass you, uh, what year did they go back to you? <laughs> what year? <laughs> So, you know, 2014 was a good year, right? 2014. <laughs> you had an order sitting there, wedding order, album, not decided on from 2014. Actually, she had two albums. And mm. so, I, yeah, and so she's actually getting, um, unfortunately, separated. Um, you know, life has well, changed. Why you have to get on to them quickly, right? You know, I realized you know, one of the things we worked on is the processes, you know, in the business, which is really seriously lacking actually in my business prior to this. Um, so, uh, you know, that did really highlight that issue uh, because I actually had a, a few albums uh, from 2016 as well, you know. So, um, you know, it was definitely a, probably a weak point on my side. So we set up some new processes so you could keep a track of those. Um, it was just a matter of uh, on the paper, on the orders of, of writing the date you contacted and checking regularly and keep chasing. But the emails I sent, which you probably thought were a bit rough, tough. Did you? Tough. Yeah. They were tough. And we gave them a deadline and yeah. they responded within what, two or three days? Uh literally the same day uh, or a couple of days those were good emails then weren't they they, they were fantastic and actually Have you've to... done some other uh, emails like that for me in the past yeah where we based up you know some defaulted payment plans yeah and uh, it's always worked out you know i think one thing i realized was that um i never used that language that uh, that mindset around handling that mm. uh, so i've definitely learned a lot in that regard so I was, I'd like to say I was too English, you know, at that point. Too English, too nice. English gentleman. Yeah, well. <laughs> um, so anyone out there, photographers, wedding photographers, if you've got any money owing you, you've got to get that some action on that. You know, don't assume people haven't got money. Uh, it's your money anyway. So this is the time to go get it. And yeah, de definitely go out there. I know a lot of photographers, you know, when times are good, they've got outstanding payments and they're too busy to, you know, get onto it and get that money in. But it's so important, cash flow. And this is a, the moment in time that it can really bite you. Um, and it is your money, let's face it. So go out and get it. Um, uh, the, the other thing is, um, um, that's a way you can get money if you've got. I knew a photographer once that had nearly forty thousand dollars out there and outstanding orders, and I'm going, you're kidding. But you know, the cash flow was good at the front end, but the back end there was still forty thousand dollars that could be in their bank account, but was just in various people's bank accounts. So do work on that about trying to get some money in. And um, if you have trouble, write an email. Um, I can write a good solid email, but you have to promise me if I do it that you send it. Because right. I know I created a couple for clients and they've said, oh, I can't send that. Press the button, send it. Because the expectation that people may be angry at you, what yeah. you found, it was the 
opposite, right? They were happy that you contacted them, give them a shake, give them a deadline and say, come on, let's get rid of this, both of us. Yeah, they they were um, smiling. I I had um, the people come by the studio, you know, each client uh, to pick up their stuff and they had nothing but um, gratitude. In fact, uh, another client, she just wrote back and goes, I'm so grateful that you've reached out to me, you know, just to Mm -hmm. remind me about yeah, and the letter wasn't uh, fluffy. It was, you know, you've got a deadline, otherwise, you know, we're going to set fire to your files in the middle of the backyard. No, it wasn't like that. But that's the that's what they thought. <laughs> it was <laughs> the intensity. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's really about uh, people's priorities. You know, so really that was a low yeah. priority for a lot of people. That's right. You just put it high on the priority list. Exactly. Yeah, the other thing is, uh, you know, we talked about deferring rent payments with your landlord. Now, I know you haven't spoken to your landlord yet, have you? So, um, <clears throat> we're in this, you know, this like little community of stores here. Um, I came across some help. So, I've actually forwarded that uh, information about the SBA um, CARES Act information. Um, and I forwarded that actually to my landlord as well, as well as all the other store owners. And the thought is, um, if we were able to uh, apply for that in the US, that will actually pay for our lease payments on the store. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, personally, I'm okay. Uh, but if there's other people struggling, I would definitely reach out to your landlord. The last thing um, a landlord wants to do is lose you. Yes. You know, yeah, he, think, he, um, he doesn't want to walk past his building, you know, uh, a couple of days from now and see that everybody's scarpered and, and right. what we yeah. used to call a moonlight flit. And <laughs> where it's just some, they come in and they don't want that either. They want to cling yeah. on to you and, and uh, they'll have to make some financial sacrifice to do that. I, and I think it's in their best interest. You know, uh, yeah. I actually thought, I'm sure they have a mortgage on, the, on this building. Well, if yeah. perhaps they could just do is, uh, reduce the lease amount just for a month or two to the, what they need to pay their mortgage. And I, you know, that's a lot cheaper than trying to find somebody to replace you. Yeah. Um, um, Lyndall's asking, uh, Warren, uh, about the email. You wouldn't <clears throat> have easy access to one of those emails, would you? If you uh, don't, don't worry, we can keep moving forward. I can probably dig out one, actually. I yeah. know oh, you, you probably can just just, uh, just, just yeah. give us some idea of, of one of them if you can. Yeah, sure. Give me a sec. Okay. So uh, the, the thing is, in these times, the first thing we look at, of course, is um, how we can bring money in and how we can save money. So how we can bring money in, chasing up outstanding payments, how we can save money, defer rental payments, mortgage payments, whatever the government is offering, you should go out and get. Now, you may think that all of this is for those that are struggling. Well, just see what you're entitled to. Yes, some people will be struggling more than others, some will be all right, but whatever your entitlements are, you should go for and not worry about other people. This is about you. The other thing, as I said to Warren, and when I was at his studio, I noticed that he had a lot of photography gear, right? In fact, <clears throat> he had a, a room full. And so I said to him a couple of days ago, what can you sell? Is this something you don't need there that you can put on eBay or somewhere and get some money in? And did you come up with any, any uh, answer to uh-huh. that? Did you look at your equipment? Yeah, actually, so I'm a bit of a lens hoarder, uh, you know, over the years. Um, How many have you well. got? How many lenses have you got? Uh, 14. You know, Pardon? Uh, 14. Pardon? 14. <laughs> you, 14 lenses. Yeah, you know, the Canon L glass, which is, you know, kind of like, it was always my dream glass uh, over the years. So, so um, there's about, how much is there? 14,000, 7,000, 5,000? You're looking at a lens that's usually uh, between what twelve hundred to two thousand yeah. dollars. So if they've got five hundred for ten of them, that's five thousand dollars. 
you, there's definitely a few lease payments in that camera bag of mine. <laughs> that's right. <Yeah. laughs> and that's besides all the lights you've got, right? So right. What, you've got a few lights in there, haven't you, as well? Or yeah. Dashed? Yeah. Really so, yawning. Yeah. Go uh -huh. on. Yeah, so I mean, I, because I no longer work in the wedding uh, market, uh, <laughs> yeah. that, that was my justification for a lot of stuff. Uh, I always have backup to backups, you know, and, but and so I do have a lot of flashes and strobes of which I don't really need half of them. Um, you know, I've got like five Canon strobes, uh, some old alien bees. Uh, so what I'm probably going to do is use eBay uh, to get rid of small laptops, yeah. lenses, right. you know, yeah. some strobes. Hey, we could put an ad out here. There's a lot of photographers that need lenses, right? <laughs> They you know, cashed up, like so. If you want to buy any of Warren's lenses, just contact him. They're for oh, sale, really cheap, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, you know. Yeah, it's negotiable. Market, market value. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, there's some beautiful glass in there, and you know, when you work in a project studio, you really only need a handful of lenses. Uh, well, maybe yeah. just <laughs> like one. <laughs> maybe one or two. Like the zoom uh, lens. So, you know, you just need a 24-70 or an 85, you know. That's it, done. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, there may well be about 10 lenses in eBay, you know, pretty yeah. soon. Um, so I did find that email. Yeah, and what did uh, uh, give us give okay. us an example? So the subject line was, you know, important information about your wedding album, because we were chasing up about the wedding album. And uh, the gist of it was, you know, um, would you please contact the studio? Here's my phone number to organize a time to collect your album. At present, I am undergoing a studio renovation. I would appreciate it if you could collect the album in the next 10 days. That was it. Yeah. And uh, that's that, all we put. Um, for that particular type of client, we had two like that. And that worked really well. And then there's some others where uh, it was about collecting. Um, the prints and such, and that we're worried that uh, these may well end up in the garbage bin. I think we put that in the email. I uh, think we said, uh, due to the fact we're doing studio renovations, uh, your prints uh, orders may get damaged. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you could collect them in the next three days or something like that. So. Yeah. I mean, seriously, like when you were here working on the studio, uh, I call it the Bernie Tornado. Uh, you know, I had a lot of stuff up on the walls and it was a lot of fun, I gotta say, you know, taking that all down to the garbage bin out back here and uh, just see you jump up and down in the trash bins yeah, out there. Just, just, yeah. yeah, that's right, throwing the rubbish. Yeah, we, we had a bit of cleansing as well and filled a, a big rubbish bin. Now, so first thing on your mind should be, how can I get money in? Second thing is, and we've mentioned that um, about selling stuff, um, chasing up outstanding payments. The other thing is, how can we um, uh, do it? Maybe, uh, maybe um, what a lot of my clients have done is trying to sell files or products. Um, suppliers are offering massive discounts now. And uh, I do have to thank the sponsors, by the way, uh, PhotoBizX, which is a great podcast. If you're not a member, go to Photo Biz, Photo Biz X um, and become a member there. Also, um, uh, Celdex, one of the major suppliers to the industry for years, who I used to deal with 50 years ago. And uh, <laughs> um, Global Imaging Products, great products. Uh, Mark there, still working hard to sort of keep uh, everything afloat and uh, keep his great product, products in the marketplace. And and Graphy Studio, of course, another great supplier. So um, all of those suppliers are offering massive discounts at present. So um, good, good chance to, to get some new display samples and that and, and offer uh, cheaper prices to your clients. So uh, we're sending out newsletters to clients, uh, seeing if they want to purchase the files. Um, the way we're doing that is that we're doing a big upgrade, a computer upgrade. And when we've previously done this, uh, we've lost a lot of customer files. So if they want to make sure that they are still in our database and uh, their precious uh, family memories are preserved forever, then if they can contact us, um, 
we're doing the upgrade on, uh, you know, March the 3rd, a couple of days away from the uh, newsletter. And uh, just to shake people up a little bit and give them the opportunity. And then, you know, if you want, um, which I suggest, then you can just empty your, your hard drive of files because there's no need to keep them. Um, so that's another way, uh, selling files to um, products, uh, maybe offering uh, discounts. The other thing is about, the, the other thing we did to try and get money in is, and, and you've done this, Warren, um, there may be some people that haven't been back yet uh, to look at the photographs. And it, it sort of got a bit stuck in the timeline of, of uh, social distancing and all of that. So you, you did... Uh, uh, one, I think, online so far. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so Tell us how <clears throat> you did that. And so tell us about the sale. Tell us, tell us if you, you got any money from it. Yeah. Um, so I've, what I've been doing, actually, when I've had to do a, a remote IPS, um, is using a product, a fantastic product, actually called nview.com. So it's n-view.com. Yeah. Um, what that tool allows you to do is um, send out a link uh, to that client and then they log in and then you can do your IPS as you normally would do in your studio. What was, um, what was it called again? New View. N-view.com. Yeah. yeah, okay. And I'll, I'll yeah. type it in a little window here. Type um, it in the uh, chat box. Yeah, there you go. So... <laughs> What that allows you to do actually is you send out a link and I've got a few clients at a destination, um, have one that's about five or six hours away from me. I went down there last year, you know, to do some um, family portraits with them. And so because of everything that's going on right now, uh, and also because of destination, it just worked out better. And so when I was in that Sunday, actually doing closing out on the albums, uh, we started chatting about doing their IPS. And I said, well, are you free right now? And so I just basically just pivoted on that moment, sent them a link, uh, got scrambled around to make sure everything was like set up correctly. And um, I did my IPS with a, you know, sort of a slideshow, uh, walked through some wall ideas. I actually used my website to show them some right. product products. Products, because you've got the products on your website with starting prices, yep. And some examples in there on the website as well. So. I said, okay, let's just pull that up. So basically we used Enview and also Skype. So I was able to see, it, see them and their reactions and talk to them, but right. also control the slideshow from this end. Okay, so you got both of those open at the same time? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good connections. And um, I was able to you know, sell them um, you know, a print collection and uh, I was very happy with that. Uh, they got what they wanted, um, and we've kind of moved on from it. Uh, I had a client last year where I had two people in different locations connect to the IPS right. um, out there in Iowa, and um, I was able to sell them a few thousand dollars worth of uh, canvases. You know, right. so the so way that was, yeah, you have to show them the products. You know, you have to be able to show them that. Uh, and then it's really easy for them to see themselves in those pictures, you know, hanging up on the wall. So this is something else that you could do, uh, photographers who are listening to this, that uh, maybe that even uh, if they haven't got any people that haven't been in without standing uh, um, to see the photos, even if everybody's been in, you could re-invite people in saying you've got discounts on certain products because of this time the manufacturers have reduced the prices by 40 to 70 percent and it's a great opportunity for them uh, to buy more products mm -hmm. so i mean these are things we can do and and keep our name out there as well just keep touching people and, and just keep uh, you know letting them know that we're still in business and we're still active uh, just on that point someone asked this yesterday warren and Laura's asking it now. Um, is there any protection from screenshots during a virtual IPS? So, yeah, you and I were chatting last night about this. Yeah. And I, I logged into MVU, and you are able to create your watermark 
in any way you want, any kind of size you want, the way it's positioned over an image, and you can just have that enabled um, in your slideshow. Uh, so even though somebody can do a screen grab from any computer, they could even sit there with their, eye, their, their phone and take yeah. a picture. Yeah. Um, what we proved though last night was that you can actually watermark the images. Right. And you can have a nice big ugly watermark if you want right over in the middle. Um, so you know, but, this, is, this is a splash screen that your watermark's on. So the slides come sort of behind it. Is that the way it works? Uh, well, so you have your, you have your initial um, splash screen when you start. So as soon as the couple look at your slideshow, they're actually going to see a static picture to start with, which is just, you know, a watermark um, wherever you want it. But when you start the slideshow, that's the next place where you can actually watermark each of the individual images, as you would do normally in a gallery, like an online gallery. Um, so like before envy i was using shoot proof in there you know you can have your watermark positioned in different ways and different opacities um i basically have it um i never actually normally use a watermark personally um my thought is they're not going to do much and even if they do screen grab it's going to be such a crappy resolution you know uh and uh, we're at that point anyway with an ips that they are most likely my kind of clients and interested in purchasing something. So it's never really been a fear that they're going to steal from it, but you can watermark, it's not a problem. And you yeah. can do it anything you want. Look, I've never been a great believer in, in doing sales on, on online, but this has started, you know, like everything's going online now. And yeah. I think it could possibly change the total future. Um, um, I noticed there's an orchestra playing. Um, I don't know if you've seen that. All everybody's at home, and yeah. the conductor's conducting them via Zoom or something. And I mean, the possibilities um, are, are, are endless. And people are learning that you know we can do a lot. And I think maybe in the future <clears throat> it will open up a lot more um, as we you know, and software developers uh, perfect better techniques of doing things that we can do, you know, these uh, in person, in virtual form. Uh, I know it's happening with real estate agents. Um, yeah. They're showing properties on their iPhone and they're doing a, a run around like that as, it, as we can't go and see properties now except one-on-one. -on -one. So yeah, a whole exactly. new world. Yeah, well, we've, we've got to get more innovative and uh, start to do things differently because, as you know, that's my thing about doing things differently. Um, the reason I survived for so many years in my business was that I changed constantly. I never waited to change. I, I didn't want to wait. I had been forced to change. This is probably one time in my life I've sort of been forced to do things that maybe I wouldn't have done. But so I feel a little bit, less in control, but I'm still in control, if you know what I mean. I, I do, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, like, really, what I did the other day, it wasn't out of anger to reschedule everything for the entire month, it was really just to take control. My frustration yeah. was- Yeah, exactly, that's, that's exactly, that was your choice. You didn't yeah. wait until the customer got back to you and blah, 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 you said, yeah. okay, you customers, you bunch of customers, I'm now putting you in my, and uh, yeah. just stay there. I may yeah. move you to June. Yeah, yeah. I can play <laughs> Sit there. Right now. Yeah, you're just uh, playing, yeah. playing with them. That's, that's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. It's about you taking control uh, of your destiny, um, you know, well, and, and your life track. Yeah. I wanted to make sure that they felt that we do care about them and their health. But also, yeah. we did it by a phone call. So we phoned every one of them. And well, good on you. we suggested the date and the time and moved them. Yeah, fantastic. So the other thing that we're doing just before we, we close this session um, is gift certificates. We can uh, offer gift certificates. We can put it out there via our newsletter. And that's something certainly everyone should be doing about newsletters. We'll talk about that uh, with the next webinar that we'll put for the same time next week. Um, 
uh, so keep uh, keep your eye on for some information about that. I'll be sending that out uh, in the next day or two. So we'll we'll do the same again. We've only got through about ten of our list of well. I've got 32 at this point, so there's a lot of little things we can do. And uh, we want to sort of continue these webinars just to help and encourage everyone out there. And uh, we're here. If we can help, feel free to contact Warren on Warren at Warren McCormack okay. Photography or Warren McCormack dot com. That's and uh, Warren's got plenty of time on his hands if you want to ask any questions or have a Zoom session with him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. sitting back. He's sitting yeah. at the studio <laughs> from eight in the morning <laughs> till nine at night, hoping this thing will go away. <laughs> uh, he's practicing I, yeah. social distancing. He's keeping <laughs> miles yeah, away from anyone. It's an introvert's paradise right now, right? Um, yeah. I'm actually a part-time introvert, so this is, you know, uh, it's kind of nice. Um, but... You know, it is a fantastic time to catch up and focus on what you need to get done, you know, and just really put your energy into that. Um, do what I do, actually, also. This is what I recommend, right? Uh, we use, uh, we cut the cord so we don't have any cable TV or anything. So what we do is we use YouTube to watch the morning news. And what you can do there is just click on the segment, the titles of what you want to listen to. So I just want to get an update on what's going on in the country and then jump out. Yeah. Uh, it, it could be very uh, depressing actually, you know, to see what's going on. So you've really got to try and control that. So you, you start your day in the best possible way. Yeah, well, uh, I haven't been uh, uh, outside, so I don't know what's going on out there. I peer out the window and yeah, the sun still rises and that's a bonus. And uh, sometimes it comes into the apartment here and. I look at the people walking in the street and wonder what that's like. Um, we've got a beach across the road and I wonder what it's oh. like to walk along the beach again. But it's going to be so maybe, hard. <laughs> yeah, maybe on Saturday when we, uh, we have the freedom to walk the streets, I'll maybe just get naked and run, run along the beach. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> or maybe. Maybe not. Maybe Wendy and I just opened the bottle of champagne. We got waiting in the fridge to celebrate. Uh, but anyway, once we're out there, we know we've got to be careful. We're, we're going into a worse environment than we're in now. We we may just stay here, you know, and bolt the door and stay away from everybody because um, yeah. this is the safest environment. So um, yeah, I literally go from my house to my studio, and that's it. Yeah. Like I Two places, you know, I might jump into the grocery store or the gas station, but I haven't, <laughs> I haven't seen a person really except on TV or Zoom, you know. So. Yeah, and thanks, yeah. Greg, for offering to come up and uh, weld the gate shut so I can't <laughs> get out. Thank you very much for that. Uh, really nice. You're, you're lucky you're, you're in the country area, so um, you, you've got less... Uh, <laughs> as people to uh, you know you have to worry about it. but what I want to do what I want to do Warren or, or what I affectionately call you Waza which is <laughs> Australian for Warren uh, sorry Australian for Warren Waza yeah yeah thanks for your time we'll do this again if we can next week and we'll just keep going down the list and just keep encouraging people yeah so I hope you get something from that, everyone. Uh, we have recorded this, so I hope um, if you weren't sure about anything, you can revisit. Uh, but basically, the points were try and get money in in any way you can. Uh, that includes the government and, and try and save money um, as well. So um, um, all the best. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Cough in your elbow. All of those things. And don't talk to any strange people. And uh, we hope to see you next week. And, and Warren, thanks for your valuable time and insight into the mindset part and that we can get through this. Oh, yeah. You're absolutely welcome. And it's my pleasure. Uh, if anybody's got any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, yeah. Help you guys. Okay, good on you. All right, I'll end the meeting now. We hope to see you all again uh, next week. All right, uh, thanks everybody, and uh, thanks for everyone.
for showing up wherever you are in the world. Be safe. Yeah. See you guys.